Hi, I'm Maria Theohara Silvelisos. Welcome back to Soul Organized Style Podcast, featuring textile artists for the upcoming Making Zen Online Retreat. Grab a cuppa and relax with us. On Soul Organized Style Podcast, I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we record this podcast and pay respects to the elders past and present. Thanks for joining us on Soul Organized Style Podcast. Kate Ward is running the Making Zen Online Retreat from the 24th to the 28th of October and I'll be featuring a couple of the textile artists who are contributing at this retreat. Sarah Pedlow or at Thread Written and also at Sarah Pedlow Studios on Instagram is today's textile artist podcast guest. Sarah, thank you for being today's Making Zen Online Retreat guest. Thank you so much for having me, Maria. It's great to be here. It's lovely that you can be here so that our listeners can hear a little bit more about your background and what your specialty is. Yeah, I'm so excited to be a part of the Making Zen Retreat. I am an artist. My training is in mixed media photography and installation art. I came to textiles through an artist residency in Budapest in 2009. So I had been doing photography and mixed media. I had thought a little bit about textiles in various forms, surface design, but I hadn't done a lot of sewing or stitching, really. I had learned to make a dress with my grandmother in my early 20s. Yeah. And had actually purchased a sewing machine in order to do sewing with photos, to sew through photos and paper and that kind of thing. In 2009, I did a a month-long artist residency in Budapest, and I was there for photography. And one day I went to the Ethnographic Museum, and out of curiosity, I decided to take a look. And I walked into the textile display, and specifically the room with all of the different mannequins with traditional clothing from the different regions of Hungary. And that was it. (laughs) I was... I was just uh, really blown away by the beauty and the diversity of the styles of clothing and the embroidery. So that led me into the world of embroidery, which has become my focus with my business thread written. That's the beauty of going and looking at other inspirations at museums or at exhibits, because as you found out, it's ignited you know, an interest in you that we can now benefit from. Yes, uh, it is such a joy to be a part of this world of handcraft, of sewing and embroidery. And for me, it's the joy is really in connecting with people and learning about different cultures and helping people connect with their heritage in a lot of cases. And if not one's own heritage, specifically just the lineage of makers in the world. You know, we are, I think we all have the creative instinct, especially as children, we're all, you know, painting and doing projects and often we lose that. And so I think embroidery and any kind of, you know, needle arts are a great way to connect with that inner creativity and also connect with history and our roots. Following on from that thought about history and people's backgrounds, are there any specific embroidery techniques that you have already found are from particular regions? Yes, there are many stitches that you can find in varying forms all over the world, but I have tended to focus on specific styles and stitches from Central and Eastern Europe. Building from my experience in Budapest, I first traveled back to Hungary a few years later and then to Transylvania, Romania to focus on a certain type of chain stitch, which comes from the the Hungarian population there. And it's called written embroidery or irashosh in Hungarian, which translates as written. And that's actually part of how I developed my business name, Thread Written, thinking about written embroidery uh, from Transylvania, and also just the idea of textiles and text and stitching as a form of writing as a language, as a document. There's so much there. You know, it makes perfect sense now that thread written is what you focus on because that's what the embroidery provides that culture with. I mean, we've touched on your account and where we can find you on Instagram. Is there anywhere else that we can find you online? 
Yes, I have a website for Threadwritten. It's threadwritten.com. And that's where you can find all of my related activities, workshops, travel tours. And I also have a website for my personal art practice, which is sarahpedlow.com. So in, in my art practice, I am currently making mixed media work that works with photography and incorporates stitching and drawing. I was going to ask you if once you found embroidery as what you were focusing on, did you continue to do the photography? And now you've answered that question. <laughs> yes, yes. The two feed off of each other. They really nourish each other. And in my art practice, it's a melding of all of these beautiful traditions, these, the color, the pattern, everything that I'm seeing and experiencing when I'm learning and researching and teaching for Threadwritten. And then also just my daily experience. I moved to Amsterdam from the San Francisco Bay Area in 2019. And so I've been living here um, as an expat and especially through COVID, you know, taking a lot of walks. And so I've, I've started using photographs from my experience, just walking and seeing what I find around me. It comes out in a very different form. My artwork is, is much more um, minimal, <laughs> really about line and kind of taking the essence of a, a floral pattern or an element from clothing that could be from the 1800s or actually could be contemporary and combining them on and kind of within a photo. The other question I had in the back of my mind, you've started this journey in embroidery from 2009. Mm -hmm. Do you find it a lot easier to research now than you did when you first started because of technology? Yes. Let me think. Yes. I started out actually emailing groups and making contacts that way, but it has definitely, the world has gotten smaller during that time with the help of the internet and even things like having a VPN now. So now I can log in from the country where I'm doing research and then be able to better access information, you know, in the language with the resources of that country. So even that is helpful and something that I wouldn't have been able to conceive of in the past. Because the other thing too might be that have hashtags made it easier for you to find what you're looking for with your research? Yes, actually. Um, you know, and I should use them more than I do. I often <laughs> still find myself reverting to just kind of the normal, the, the usual ways I would research things rather than, you know, first thinking, oh, I should go to social media and hashtag blah, blah, blah. But yes, <laughs> that's, um, that is such a great way to find things. The only reason I say that is because on the podcast, I do a lot of podcasts for the Sober 50 community. And that was a hashtag, which has an account. And that mm -hmm. started from call to, to action in 2018, mm -hmm. with probably what, 300 people in the first month to, I think they're almost at about 45,000 followers now. Fantastic. So that's why I'm saying hashtags might actually be one of those yeah. ways to be able to, like, when you're doing research. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's wonderful. Congratulations. That's really an accomplishment. That's great. Yeah. It's a, a real testament to the community. The Server 50 community was founded by Judith Staley who is in Scotland, and oh, okay. Sandy back in Brisbane, and they've got a blog writer in the UK. So like it started international and it's just continued to grow. Oh, wonderful. Wow, all over the world. That's really great. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, nice. I digress. Um, that's okay. No, I'm like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look it up now. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Winter Making Zen Retreat, what's going to be your focus I am going to talk a little bit more about my background and show images related to the stitching exercise that I'll be doing. So with all of my workshops, I'm, I always give a little slide presentation to give some cultural context. So I'm going to be working with the chain stitch and looking at different cultures using the chain stitch and lead us through an exercise with that. Well. Wow. Having that context is actually quite good because you're helping people who are in the course understand the significance of what this very simple stitch 
means to that particular culture. Yes, exactly. The beauty of stitching, right, is that it has many practical uses and then many creative and expressive uses and, yeah, many uses that that illuminate the culture. That's one of the beauties of the Making Zen Online Retreat is that there are a number of presenters who have their specific take on artistry and textiles. So it's great that you've got that cultural context for what it is that you're doing. That's my goal. Yeah, that's my goal is to connect us with a tradition and a history and a practice. And then also to see what we can do with it too, like the artist side of myself. I also teach a kind of a more creative art class where we look at contemporary artists using embroidery as well as traditional textiles and then make a piece of of your, you know, using your own imagination. Like what ideas do I want to focus on? What do I want to create from all of this wealth of, of material? Yeah, that's great. I know that with the Making Zen on, online retreat, there's the Facebook group and a lot of the participants share what they've learned. So I know that that's going to be really interesting to watch. I am, yeah, I am so excited to see what people make and to, um, you know, to sit in on the other talks and just to be a part of the community. It's always good to see the range of creativity across all of the participants. When we started chatting, you did talk about the range of things that you do. Can you run us through those in a bit more detail so people can find you online and get in contact with you? Yes, you can find me at threadwritten.com and on Instagram at threadwritten. And I uh, teach workshops mostly online now that I'm located in Amsterdam, um, but also sometimes in the the Bay Area, Uh, like I will be back in the Bay Area in December. So I will be teaching in person there uh, as well. And I also, now that we're out of COVID, lead textile retreats, uh, cultural textile tours. And so I take people to Transylvania to learn to stitch with the women doing Hungarian written embroidery. And I also take people to two different regions of Portugal to embroider and really experience the culture. It's a lot more than embroidery. It's, it's really about art and architecture, culture, food, and with some embroidery workshops. Included. Mm-hmm. Yes, included. <laughs> they sound like a lot of fun and very eye-opening for anyone who wants to get involved and join you. Yes, it's really, um, I think, as close as I can get to a cultural immersion, you know, just taking yeah. taking a short trip and um, I'm there with a guide or um, or my partner in the case of Portugal, who who is native, and we really get to follow the back roads and visit collections and things that are not in the guidebook. So it's really fun. It sounds fun and very special. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. (laughs) You're welcome. What is life like in Amsterdam compared to when you were living in the Bay Area? Well, my life is different because I'm, you know, working mostly for myself now and working online. So that is very different than my lifestyle before. Until, Until I moved here, I was working, I was making my living as a massage therapist. So I was doing that in private practice and in a spa. So my, my lifestyle was different in terms of like being out and doing that work with people, um, which I really enjoyed and appreciate, which is also, I think, why something like this, like Kate's philosophy really, really appeals to me because I, I, you know, body work is so much about meditation and <laughs> creating Zen, right? Right. And presence. I feel like a lot of my interests with making and creativity are about being present. So in the moment, yeah, I mean, I, I still pinch myself that I live here. I, I, it's just so beautiful to be in such an incredible historic city. Mm. And we were taking a walk last night and the swans swam by in the canal. And it's just, yeah, I look at the architecture and yeah, it's just, it's really beautiful. So to be Surrounded by that, that beauty is really an exceptional thing. Although the Bay Area is beautiful too. I lived, lived in Oakland and I worked in San Francisco. Um, oh, yes. But sure, you know, so there's a lot of beauty. Uh, San Francisco is also one of the most beautiful cities in the world, I think. So 
I feel fortunate to have been in great places. Oh, thank you for answering that question. But I understand why you would go to Amsterdam because you're so close to those countries that have ignited your textile artistry. It's a perfect place to be. Yeah, people often ask me that. Why did I decide on Amsterdam? And it, it, um, well, it ended up because I met my partner in the Netherlands several years ago on another artist residency. He's Portuguese. It's such a hub in terms of travel. Um, The textile traditions and the traditional clothing here are also really beautiful. The sampler tradition. Yep. There's not as much embroidery in the clothing. Um, there's, there's some from the city of Marken, which used to be an island that has a really beautiful traditional clothing with embroidery and fabric from Indonesia and Africa and all, yep. you know, with, thr- with the trade routes. So there's, it's, yeah, this is a very rich, rich place to be in a good, yeah, good central location for travel. Good on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sarah, thank you for coming onto the podcast to talk to us about your textile artist specialty and what we can look forward to from your presentation at the Making Zen online retreat. Thank you so much for having me, Maria. And it's been an honour to have met you as well. Thanks so much. It's always fun and it's always a privilege to be able to talk about what I do and share it. So thanks so much. Oh, you're most welcome. Thanks, Sarah. Bye-bye. Bye. This episode for the Making Zen Online Retreat on Soul Gunai Style was produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, with permission of Sarah Pedler and Kate Ward, sound by bensound.com. You can subscribe to Soul Gunai Style Podcast, but with an S not a Z on all good podcast apps. Make sure you go back and listen to our free Making Zen Online Retreat Podcast archive. And if you can, consider supporting the production of this podcast on Patreon. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone.